Well, I must say it has been a very challenging journey, rewarding, but very challenging. And alhamdulillah, with my faith and my support from my family, I managed to survive it. I was, of course, working as a full-time mother, active, 48-year-old full-time mother, so ferrying my children to school and back, full of life. The last thing I expected was a diagnosis of cancer. Being diagnosed with this disease is uh, not easy. Unfortunately, at the time I was diagnosed, there was a lot of taboo. People were associating cancer with uh, death. But I was very lucky in the sense that uh, the late uh, His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, uh, with his generosity and his wisdom, I was able to get the best treatment. And I was offered uh, treatment abroad. At that time when I was diagnosed, the cancer center was not built. It was in existing in 1998. After my treatment, that is post-cancer diagnosis, I realized that uh, a lot of people didn't talk about this disease. And uh, when people came to visit me after I came back from my cancer treatment, of course, you know, I've been diagnosed with four cancers, three one after the other, and the fourth one 15 years later. So uh, people were telling me that you have to go back to your God as if I'm being punished for getting the cancer. So I realized that uh, I need to sit and do something about it. I decided that I'll do um, a professional meeting with like-minded uh, cancer survivors and uh, invite people to see, just brainstorm and see what uh, people know about this disease. Unfortunately, uh, nobody, a, lot of, a lot of people wanted were hungry for information about cancer. What is it? How can we deal with it? And alhamdulillah, with the support of my family, a lot of uh, personal friends who believed in me, who believed in what I wanted to do, what I was setting out to do, they supported me fully. Of course, the government, I can't thank them enough. And from there, the Oman Cancer Association was formed. Alhamdulillah, we've already screened over 25,000 women and these women will never have gone to have a mammogram. And we have fast-tracked them if we find anything to go directly to have uh, further treatment. We initiated, we followed them up until the time they admitted in hospital and after that as well. And I noticed that normally I used to go to the outpatient uh, clinics just to visit, sit with the patient before I set up the Dar al-Hanan. And I noticed that the doctors were very frustrated when they were examining the children because most of them, they came by the time the, the, the disease was already spread. And I asked, why is that? Why, is, why didn't they bring the children back for their follow-up? Because the children are treated, they go back and then they have to come back for follow-up to be examined again. And they told me it's because they didn't have accommodation. The mother will stay with the child in the hospital. What about the father? Where would he stay? Most of them could not afford hotels. The father had to leave work. That means it could be one or two weeks he couldn't go to work. So it was very frustra frustrating, both for the families and for the doctors. That's how I think the Dar al-Hanan concept came. So we have uh, 16 rooms en suite with their bathroom and we changed the rooms at the back and we made them to a place where they can sit and have their meals, they can wash their clothes, you know, it's like being at home. Just imagine how it is. And of course we admit everybody, not just Omanis, it is free, they don't have to pay anything and it is for everyone who has a child residing outside the Muscat area. People stop me on when they see me in the supermarket or out, are you youth of Rawahi? I said, yes, and you know, by reading your article, or I'm not, you know, it helped me a lot to make a decision that I can do it as well. So that gives me strength. And to, when I see that the, 
both the government and the private companies are supporting what we want to do, that gives me th strength. When I feel that I want to do something and people are supporting us, that's what gives me th strength. Have faith. Don't give up. Have hope. You can do it. No matter what, if you set your mind, and the mind is a wonderful organ that you can, uh, you know, if you think deep enough and have faith. You know, if you have faith in God and you believe that I can do it, you will do it. Don't give up.